I thank everybody for hopping on this morning to kind of go through some of the production reporting within NEU system. Um, if, uh, if for anybody who has not met me before, I'm Gabe Power. I'm a senior operations underwriting specialist, kind of a mouthful um, with NAU here, but uh, I kind of deal a lot with the system side of things. Um, as well as doing a little bit of underwriting on the other side too. So uh, I appreciate everybody hopping on here. And uh, what we kind of are, are looking to forward to do today um, is to show you uh, many ways to report production um, within NAU system, as well as a few other things as well that we'll kind of touch base on here. With that, we will actually get uh, to the agenda here and what we're actually going to be covering today. Um, within EasyWriter Pro, we're going to actually go through the dashboard stats. So um, there's a lower left quadrant in Easy Writer Pro that we'll kind of touch on uh, that uh, is an easy and simple way to know what uh, you might be possibly uh, missing for APHs and stuff like that. Um, we can also run the missing APH report within our report center. Um, we'll show you how to navigate to that and then uh, that kind of goes a little bit more in depth and in detail uh, by um, policy and units whereas uh, our other one might just uh, be kind of a higher uh, level overview of what's actually missing within your agency there. Um, then we'll kind of touch on to the quick APH, uh, probably the um, most effective way to report production within an AU system. Uh, and there's a few other tools within that quick APH tab that we will touch on, uh, including setting temporary yields, um, assigning yields, uh, and then uh, a few other things as well. So uh, we'll touch on that. Um, another tab within uh, quick APH is a production import. So if you have any farmers or producers um, that get scale tickets from the elevators or they just uh, um, are a little bit more organized when it comes to production uh, and they have their own Excel file, we'll show you exactly how we can actually take that Excel file um, and import it into our system. So uh, you can just take those numbers that were reported on there and uh, tie, the, uh, tie that um, scale ticket or whatever it may be to the, a specific unit to report production on. Um, another one uh, that's probably a little bit underutilized that we'll uh, also touch on is our companion policies and how we can actually key uh, production on one policy and then transfer everything over to uh, a, a shareholder's policy, uh, thus saving you time to have to then having to rekey it and such there. Um, current year APH reporting, uh, we'll go through that as well as our revenue loss estimator. I know that um, this is a, a nice uh, tool that we have here um, to kind of show in the event that uh, they may have a loss if on a revenue policy. Um, but one hidden fact to that is on that revenue loss estimator, you can also do your production reporting right off of that form as well. So we'll kind of touch on that. Um, and then the last couple that we'll cover is EasySign. Um, this is a nice tool, especially with uh, the times that we're in with COVID and, and such of that nature. Uh, we will go through and show you how we can actually utilize EasySign within NAU system uh, and sending an email uh, out to an insured just to get their signature on a document um, rather than to have to see them face to face or if it's in a time crunch, um, we, can, we can utilize that EasySign feature there as well. And then I don't have uh, uh, our test ferry or reflector up for our mobile reporting, um, but we will touch on uh, the user guide and uh, what IT marketing has put together as well uh, in regards to uh, production reporting via the mobile side and uh, our application there uh, on the iPhones and uh, any Androids and such there. Um, and then we will just lastly touch on our resources that we actually have our production reporting suite out on uh, NAU's website that our wonderful IT marketing team has put together. Um, it, they have user guides, ins and outs of uh, any screenshots um, for all things production reporting there. So we'll cover on that as well. So with that, we will get into our Easy Writer Pro uh, system here. And we are in a demo system, so things might be a little bit slowed up. Um, we, we had a, a couple technical difficulties, but uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed that uh, everything should be in working order here going forward. So uh, in Easy Writer Pro 2022, I have both our 2022 Easy Writer Pro and our 2021 opened as well. Um, but what we'll show here is on our 
Easy Writer Pro dashboard. So this is what you'll see when you log into Easy Writer Pro. Um, and the nice thing that is a little bit underutilized that uh, we see is underneath this lower left-hand quadrant, we have our key activities. Now, when you're in Easy Writer Pro, um, it's going to show a pie graph here, just being that we're under our training agency, this data is a little bit skewed, but um, I have a screenshot here, and this is what you should see, and it's going to pull up on your book of business, a little pie graph um, showing percentages as to what you have completed for your APHs and stuff. Now, this ACR is for your acreage reporting, this PRD is for production reporting, and then we have an easy sign and outstanding balances that we won't really touch on uh, too much today, but going into the production reporting, uh, the nice thing about these um, pie graphs is they are um, clickable and uh, you can actually view data within them. So um, for this uh, function, what if I click on this, it's going to show your book of business here and show any policies that are missing APHs in production. Um, so that's the nice thing. You can see uh, the policy here um, that we are missing some rye on. Uh, it gives you your uh, APH reporting date as well as the sales closing date there as well. Um, and to look at that a little bit further, um, underneath there we do have the tools to actually filter by your sales closing date if that's uh, what need be. Um, so that is something that is nice as well. Um, and then here I just have a, a lower screenshot um, if you have you know more than just one policy sitting on there. So like I said earlier, this is a feature that's really nice if you're just wondering what policies are missing, uh, specific production, um, and what, for what crop there. So uh, what we'll kind of get into here a little bit next is utilizing the missing APH report, which will kind of drill it down a little bit even further than uh, by policy to actually show what units on that specific policy are missing production there as well. So um, very, very nice to, tool to utilize, and that can be utilized not only on production, but acreage reporting as well. And one thing I forgot to add is when you're in this, if you wanted to double click this, it's actually going to bring you into that specific policy that you'll be working under in uh, what is on that missing APH report there as well. So just kind of make note of that. Um, you don't have to go up and search that policy from within there. You can just double click it and it'll automatically go right to that policy for you. So that is kind of the, the skinny on the key activities with uh, the dashboard step that we just wanted to touch with you guys. And then here, I just wanted to show you again, this is normally what it's going to look like. Uh, like I said, our demo system, we just show that there's no data, but um, this is what your book of business will look like within there. Now, there are a couple different ways when we're actually looking to get into the missing APH report. Um, I'll show you both, but I think by the end of uh, when I show you, it's, it's a lot easier to go um, one way via the other. But the first way I'll show you is if you go into our report center, you can actually search for that specific report if you don't have it under your My Reports. You can search missing APH. And if we hit enter there, we can see that all three of these pop up. Um, we'll choose this one via it's under the underwriting side of things, um, but they'll all kind of get you to the same place. And then from here, this should automatically um, input your agency information in there. But for this uh, reporting purposes, we'll pull up our demo site here to show you kind of what this report is going to look like. And the nice thing that uh, looking at this report parameters is you can filter by uh, crop if you would like. So if you didn't want to see any of your spring crops and maybe you're, in a, uh, you're looking to report uh, maybe some winter wheat or winter rye of that nature, you can go through here and filter out those specific crops if you would uh, like to as well. So, um, but uh, as a whole, if you just run it as your agency, um, we will pull it up and now you can see that all of our policies that are missing uh, production uh, pull into here as well as the units that are missing that specific production. So um, like I kind of showed on the dashboard stats is that, that just shows you at a policy level and then here it kind of drills down a little bit further into showing the actual units that it actually ties to as well. And the nice thing about this report that you when you run it is it's all filterable up at the top here for all of your columns. So let's say I didn't want to see um, the phone number here in regards to um, for this 
uh, report. I can go in here and I can do that select column chooser if I right click there. Again, I'll show you. So right click and then show column chooser. Now it says hide because I have it open. But uh, then you can scroll down here and you can see all of these we can either uh, toggle on or toggle off. So um, like I said, I don't want to see the insured's phone number. So now you can see I select that. It gets rid of it off the report for me. Um, and I'm good to go there. If I wanted to export this to Excel to either send um, to myself or to another coworker of uh, some sorts, um, you can go up here and hit export to Excel and it'll take everything that you have on the screen right now, all your columns and rows and export it right into an uh, Excel document for you to utilize via that way as well. So um, very nice in that respects as well. Uh, and then lastly, um, it's, it's very much the same as it was on the dashboard uh, that I could either double click to get into a policy or I can right click and I can view policy and a few other documents uh, and options uh, pop up here as well. So just kind of make note of that. Um, a lot of the stuff within EasyWriter Pro, you can right click and there will be more options um, within that line there as well. So that is the missing APH report by going through it on the Report Center tab. We'll go back to our EasyWriter Pro dashboard and the other way that I think you guys will really enjoy and I think uh, a lot of it gets looked over as well is up at the top right here, there's going to be a Quick Links tab. And what the idea behind this is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a quick link to getting to certain reports in our Report Center um, rather than to have to actually go and search manually within that Report Center there. So you can see our missing APH report pops up here. It automatically is going to go in, run that report, and then give us our report parameters that we can go and uh, either filter down by uh, search agency codes, whatever it may be as well. So uh, like I said, I think a lot of the times um, it's better to utilize it going through that way rather than to have to actually go through our report center and search it uh, that way as well. So. Just kind of something that uh, we th we wanted to touch on and uh, show you guys in uh, EasyWriter Pro how that can be filtered uh, and found a little bit easier than having to go into that report center. So, but with that, uh, we'll actually get into doing to uh, get into doing some production reporting here. So um, you can see I'm in EasyWriter Pro 2022. I'm actually going to uh, pop back into EasyWriter Pro 2021 and show a nice little feature um, on maybe policies that have not rolled into EasyWriter Pro 2022 yet. So let's say um, you know it's a it's a fall guy. Uh, it's a a guy who has spring crops that he's maybe had all of his uh, crop harvested and wants to report production. So um, as you know, if we uh, don't have that policy rolled into EasyWriter Pro 2022, you can't go in there and report that production in 2022. But we do, however, in 2021, you can go into that specific policy and you'll always want to endorse the policy first. And by doing that, that allows us to make any changes on the policy um, before committing. And here you can see if we were to select this quick APH tab, it's going to bring in all of his stuff from 2020 that we've already actually reported on, correct? So we don't want Want that and we want to actually be able to report on current year production. That's where this drop down comes into play and you can see we have our previous year APH or our current year APH. We can select that and now what we're looking at here is our uh, current year production that we have for all of our acres. And you can see I've entered a few lines in here um, that are filtered and uh, I've saved and committed on those. But um, everything that is down below here is now showing stuff that uh, I had planted in 2021 and I can go and report on now. So um, for this case, I'm just going to go through here and uh, enter a few uh, numbers here as well so don't mind this i just kind of want to give uh, a little bit of an idea of what this is going to look like once we actually go through and do our commit process here as well um, to pull this production into the next year so um, for this for this time i'll just enter this information uh, let's say he didn't give us the, you know the rest of the uh, production for these crops or units um, as well so we'll go through and uh, here I have to add in my production types. So let me do that real quick. And then I'm going to save the policy here. So once this saves for us and we are ready to commit, we go up to the left here and we hit commit. 
Now the system kind of knows, hey, that uh, I was doing some production reporting and uh, I'm going to want to actually print an APH uh, for my insured to sign with that production that I actually just reported on. Now what I can do here is I can select that production history and once I hit commit, that's going to open up my documents window where I can print an APH. Now you're probably saying to yourself like, well, this is only going to print for your 2021 APH um, and it's not going to include anything uh, in regards to that 2021 crop that we just actually reported production on. Well, there is a nice tool here when you actually have your APH submitted uh, or the document that you want submitted. You can go down here and you can say that I want to print as next year's policy and I want to include the current year production. So it's going to include uh, the 2021 production and it's also going to print as the 2022 crop year if I would like so. Um, and when you were to hit next, you can go and do your saved prints download it to your computer if you would like. But for this purpose, I'm just going to preview the document just to show you um, how that actually gets input into our system and uh, everything that you ended up keying is now onto the APH database there. Um, so just our normal cover sheets here and then when I get down into the actual APH databases here, you can see on unit 1.3 here of Rye, I reported 60,000 bushels on my 476.93 acres that were reported in 2021. So I can, uh, you you can see that everything that you keyed in the system is now onto the APH um, and any uh, ones that we possibly uh, are missing uh, production where he didn't turn that stuff into us, you can see that is blank for us uh, or you to be able to write in once he actually gives you that information. So if you were to print this out, you can uh, complete the rest of that at the time being and it's a 2022 document and then you can see at the very bottom here it does give us a signature page for both the insured and the agent, and we would just mark that it is applicable to production reporting there. So um, a very nice tool, especially when we're sitting here in 2021 where maybe that spring policy has not rolled into 2022 yet. And uh, instead of holding the production, waiting for that policy to roll to be able to key it in Easy Rider Pro 2022, we can go in here and take care of that at this time. Now, one thing to note with this is you'll want to make sure that once um, we, the policy does roll into 2022, that we're not keying production on this policy uh, in 2021 the way we just did. We would want to report, um, so let's say, you know, he missed uh, those, these uh, rye acres and wheat acres, and uh, let's say we roll the policy into 2022, all of these databases that we have reported production on will flow into 2022, and then all of this will as well, but it's gonna be remaining blank. So we would just wanna go into 2022 and report production within there because uh, the policy will have rolled and uh, anything that's reported in 2021 um, from there on out, unless if we roll that policy again, we'll stay in 2021, it won't roll over to 2022 there. So a little bit confusing, but um, just to make note of that as well. So that's uh, kind of the idea behind uh, the keying current year production um, when the policy hasn't been rolled into Easy Writer Pro 2022. But now we're going to roll, uh, we're going to get into Easy Writer Pro 2022 and show you a little bit more functionality when it comes to the quick APH, keying current year APHs and stuff of that nature. So um, I, I found the same policy that I was working with here. Um, so I'm going to endorse that policy for myself. And first off, we'll show, we'll, we won't go into the quick APH side, we'll go into our acreage-APH tab. Um, and let's say we want to report from within there rather than going into the quick APH. How do I, uh, and I get this question a lot, you know, how do I know on this screen what, uh, what units I had um, acres on last year that need production keep this year? And it's very simple to look at. Here you have your acre, uh, APH completed column. If it is blank, that means that there was acres in there and we need to have uh, um, a date put in, or we have to have production put into that unit um, down below here. So you can see I have my 476.93 acres. I'll simply just add that I have 60,000 bushels. And then lastly, if I were to try and save on this policy right now, it's going to give me an error stating that I need production type within that unit one three there. So um, you can see here, 
I can select my production type and then uh, I would choose from the list below here as well. So um, the nice thing is uh, we get this question a lot uh, as well when we're going through um, production reporting is, well, maybe he has two production types. Maybe he's sold some, maybe he's, you know, kept some stored on the farm. How do I go through and actually report, you know, a couple production types on there? Um, so we say choose the one here and then up at the top you're going to see this additional production types. And by selecting that I can then go and select any additional production types that are going to tie to that applicable unit. So let's just say um, I have uh, uh, harvest stored A and uh, harvested production um, that was farm stored as well. So we'll hit A and now you can see there is a little green uh, check at the top right corner and if I hover over that, that's just gonna uh, tell me my other production type that is applicable to that specific unit there. So now once I save this, You can see now that that APH date does get put into there and is completed. So I would just have to commit this policy and then all of my changes that I made within Keen, the current year uh, production on that specific unit is all completed right there. Another way that I recommend doing it, um, and I think a lot of people are doing it in our system right now, is always through this quick APH tab here. And when you open that, that's going to give us everything that we have in our system here. So you can see um, all of this information that I have, and I keyed a little bit earlier as well, has been input into the system here as well. So the nice thing that I can go through here do now is look at the top um, and see all of these different options that we have when actually looking at production. Um, now, if you know assigned yields or anything of that nature don't apply to it, uh, we obviously don't have to you know worry about that. But let's say in a case um, that we do have a few assigned yields. So let's say um, for whatever reason uh, these three units um, had to get assigned yields uh, set to them. Uh, what we can actually do is up here uh, we can click this drop down, and if we were to uh, select and hit all, it's going to put an assigned yield on every single database that we have in here, which is not what we want to do. We just want to have it on our selected type here. So we'll sl hit selected, and you can see that it throws in the assigned yield yield type, 75% of the prior year approved, um, and we would be good to go from there. So that's a nice tool um, that uh, we have in our system to do it uh, that way. We hope that we don't have to ever set assigned yields, but um, that is a way of doing it if, uh, if you're in our system in Quick APH there. The next tab that you can see that is actually grayed out is our set production type. So I'm just going to close out of here. I don't want to save just to kind of give you an idea of this set production type here. So you can see um, it, we have a lot of units here, right? So um, let's say I got done doing all of my production. I keyed the rest of my production and I go, well, it's a harvest stored on every single one. I don't want to have to, you know, continue to go one by one and select these, right? What's the nice tool uh, that we actually have is a set production type where we can actually go and set our production type to all those units. So now you can see that my uh, record type of A has been put in every single unit on the database. Uh, and now you can see, well, oh, I forgot that I actually had that uh, additional production type in there that I wanted to set on those units as well. You would go up here hit set additional production types, and now that blankets across the whole entire quick APH there as well. Um, so a very nice tool to save you some time rather than to have to go one by one. We know that uh, some databases get to be um, quite lengthy at times, and that is just a tool um, that we've uh, implemented to save a little bit of time when it actually comes to that as well. Just to kind of declutter things, I'm gonna get out of there and go back in. And then now um, you can see that there's this limited PP production one that's grayed out. Um, we won't go in depth on this one, but uh, what that means is uh, that would only be available on any units that had uh, PP in the prior year, um, and you'd be able to go into that uh, that button, and it'll show you some calculations uh, in regards to those that PP production and such of that. So. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, just reach out to your marketing rep and or underwriter uh, and they'll get you situated in regards to that. 
The next one is that production import that we kind of talked about um, when it actually comes to um, reporting production uh, via a Excel file or spreadsheet that we have received from either the insured, um, maybe an elevator for scale tickets and such of that nature. So we'll actually go in here and kind of show you how that ends up working out. So um, up here uh, you can see that we have a few buttons um, and the main focus that you want to look at is what we actually are looking for um, in regards to that specific crop that we want to add that import to. So um, in this case it has rye selected but I want to report all my wheat. I have all my wheat scale tickets um, from the elevator that I just received on an Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to implement and import those uh, scale tickets into the system so I can report off those. What you can do now is you'll go and hit our import button for Excel via text and now it's going to just ask you to go and find that specific Excel document. So here I go and I look for my document and I'm going to go to training and now you can see here this is my document that I have ready to go. So I'll hit open on that and then it asks you for what specific worksheet you have within there. Um, now at the bottom of every Excel workbook there are worksheets and there might be multiple worksheets that actually go within that. So if I had two worksheets I would be able to hit this drop down and select what worksheet I actually want to import there. So obviously I only have sheet one here so I will select that and I'll hit OK. Now it's asking me to import and add my template. So I'll actually show you how you can add your template. So we first have to add the template and we're just going to name it wheat here. And here it's going to start asking you where your data begins and ends and where uh, we want to actually start looking at that data. So you look at this Excel spreadsheet and you can see I have um, data starting on row one ending at row six, right? And it really only starts on row two. I don't really um, t necessarily need to look at the tickets and bushels uh, row that I have keyed in there. So we'll say that it starts on row one, ends with row six, but the data actually begins on row two, right? So now you can see that those numbers get input into here along with the production uh, that is keyed underneath that. So uh, what I can do here now is under this type of data, it's going to ask me what that data really actually ties to. Now there's a, a little bit of a list here, but um, in regards to this, you can see that this is my ticket number that I'm actually willing to uh, put into our system. So we'll put ticket number here, and then right below there is my bushels, so I will say that as my production. Now if I go up here and I hit save my template, now I'm saying, okay, everything is good to go. I have all my data tied to where I want it to go. Now I want to import this into the Quick APH. I'm going to go and hit here into our import, and now we just have to assign those ticket numbers to the specific units that we're looking for. And how you do that is if you select the unit here, so let's say uh, my ticket one is tied to all, of, these are the wheat units that are listed uh, that have production that need to be keyed on our policy. So um, my wheat unit 1111 is going to be input into there, and uh, now that folds up to the there. If I wanted to go down the row and keep inputting my specific units that it ties to, I can certainly do that. And the nice thing too as well, you could do a bulk assignment um, as well stating that, hey, uh, this wheat unit uh, or scale ticket four is really assigned to wheat 146 and you can see that it imports all that production into that specific line there as well. So um, I'm going to uh, discard my changes and kind of go through that one more time. So, or, sorry, I'm going to re-import because my template is automatically saved. So I'm going to import that. Oops. Sorry about that. Oh, let's just do this one more time. I am well, let's see here. Sorry about this. Let's cancel out of this and we'll go back in and re-import and see if if not we'll uh we'll just recreate it here really quick. I 
going to add our template here. Bear with me. One more thing to do here. We'll save it, and now we're going to import it. All right, sorry about that. So now we're going to go through and say every unit that he has here, um, we are going to, we have five units that are missing production. We have five scale tickets. Uh, so all five of those scale tickets go to a specific unit. So we're going to go through here, add these units to them, and tie it to it. And now you can see all of our units and scale tickets that we have are assigned to each other. Now, once we hit save on this and we close out, you can see now when we scroll down, all of those production numbers are actually in there. And it gives us our yield type. So if we want to change anything for whatever reason and say, um, oh, let's see here. We want to change all these production numbers to uh, something else for whatever reason, we can go in here and change all that information to match as well. So it's going to give me a high yield there. I'm just going to do 2,500 and then an additional 10,000 bushels. So that is uh, kind of the idea behind the production import tool there. Um, I know that was kind of quick and uh, I apologize for the, the little miscue uh, when doing my import there, but um, uh, it is a nice tool, especially if you have a guy who has scale tickets that he um, was given from the elevator or if he is uh, kind of on the ball um, and does a little bit more uh, via the computer sides uh, and uh, implements and utilizes all of that data from the combine harvester, uh, puts it into an Excel spreadsheet and uh, gives it to you. This is how you can actually go through and add that uh, information into our system as well. So kind of a nice tool there. We'll close out of that uh, and then we'll show our temporary yields as well just to kind of go through um, and finish off the quick APH side of things here. So we'll go back in and uh, in years where we get into situations where we have to set temporary yields on a policy, um, some might include, uh, you know, a really wet PP year where, um, or it was just a wet harvesting year where they didn't uh, get out to harvest in time and production reporting rolled around and corn was still on the ground. Uh, and we need to add a temporary yield for that. What we actually can go through here and do is we can select um, all those units that we want to set a temporary yield to. So you can see all of these units we have not had uh, production reported on here. And uh, what we can do up here is we can select this drop down. And if we're hit all, it's obviously going to import the J yield into all of our databases, which is not what we want. We want to do on our selected units. And by doing that, it automatically inputs that J yield in there and it puts the prior year's approved average in there as well. So now this is good to go. Um, we're not going to put a production type or anything in there. Um, and if we were to hit save, on this policy now, it's going to close out of our quick APH entry, and now all of our acreage-APH tab is now updated with all of our dates in there. So um, for example, we had, uh, let's see here, I just want to show you, on unit 145, um, we had 315 acres uh, that we didn't have any production for, so we plugged the J yield in there, and you can see that it inputs that prior year's approved average. Now that has to stay for one year in our system, uh, and then when you roll into the Easy Rider Pro 2023 crop year, um, that is when it would need to be updated at that time. We can't, once it's reported in our system via RMA's uh, standards and uh, within the crop insurance handbook, that has to stay within there for one year. We can't and update it throughout the year once you do finally get production on that. It has to stay as the temporary yield for that specific year. So um, that's kind of the nice thing when uh, going through production reporting. Um, like I said, most people are going to utilize this quick APH tool um, rather than going through line by line on the acreage and APH uh, tab here. Uh, it just uh, is a little bit easier of a way to do so. Um, and then we covered all of our uh, tabs that we have up top here in regards to um, doing that. So 
we'll close out of there and then now we are going to commit our policy so we commit and keep all of our changes that we have in our system and the system knows that uh, we did some production reporting so it's uh, going to generate an APH here for us and what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through some steps in regards to how we actually utilize our easy sign within NAU Country's uh, Easy Writer Pro. So we're going to commit this so it keeps all our changes. And then here it's going to uh, pop up our Documents tab. And you can see here we have our APH database that we are wanting to print and uh, have them sign as a production report. So we're going to hit Next on here, and it's going to give us our tabs that we can either add it to our queue, we can print it now, we can transfer it to our, underwritings, uh, our underwriter's queue, or we can send it to EasySign. And we're going to send it to EasySign here. So when selecting that, it's going to uh, pop up our EasySign uh, features tab. And what this is, it's showing who the agent is and who the insured is to sign. So we have crop agent as our uh, agent, and you can see here we have uh, an error stating that our cell is required and on our, uh, our insured, our email, and our cell is required as well. So how we, uh, before, if we were to try and hit next and go through this, it's going to stop you and state that we need that information in there uh, in order to complete this easy sign feature. So what we can do is we can go up and hit edit our signer, and we'll input their phone number as well. So once we get their phone number in here, we have this box where it's automatically going to be checked that is syncing changes to our entity. So uh, being that we are making these changes where we never had a cell phone for this specific agent, by having that box selected and hitting OK, now that is updated in our system. If we were to go and view them uh, and look in our system, all that information is going to be updated. And that is same it goes with our uh, with our insured here. So I'm going to input my email address here and do our phone number. And I will hit OK. So now you can see uh, all of uh, my email and um, cell phone information has been updated. And if I were to go into any policies from here on out, that, pulse, that, e uh, that email and my uh, phone number will be updated in our system and showing as that. Uh, and obviously, when we look at our eSign, we have to have those features because we send out uh, text in regards to uh, showing that uh, we have a kind of a multi-factor uh, authentication step uh, to show that they can actually get into that document. And then we're obviously sending that document to a specific email there. So when I hit Next, it's going to generate the actual document for me to um, me to kind of mark up and uh, let everybody know where I want uh, this insured to sign and so forth. So uh, a standard APH database is going to provide all of my um, pages that I have underneath here. So you can see all the information in here on the production that I did actually key. And then this is all of the data that I imported with uh, a J yield or a temporary yield as well. So um, this is all input in here. You can see my 2021 production that I input is right in there for me to take. And now let's scroll all the way down to my signature page where I need to have this insured in my self sign. So the next step that you have to do is up here you can see we have our signers box. So um, here I have my uh, agent and then here is my insured. So I want to have a signature box input in here uh, for my agent. So I'm going to select signature and it's automatically going to generate a signature box where I can then drag that down and input it into the signature box where I would have uh, the agent sign. And same goes for my insured. I want to put the box down here. And then here, um, what you can do is you can also add any initials boxes, um, any text boxes that you want to actually type something out uh, to, to note to the insured. We can certainly do that. Um, for whatever reason, if we select something we don't want, we can just remove that up at the top here. If we hit remove all, that's obviously going to remove anything that we actually have um, on the document itself right now. 
Uh, so just to show that, if we're removing that, you can see all of our signature boxes that we just placed are now gone. But if I just want to go and uh, input that again, I select that, I go up to my agent, hit my signature box, and put them right down there. Same goes for any uh, boxes. Uh, if you want to have, you know, uh, an optional checkbox that, you know, to say if he has or has not broken out native sod prior to 2014, uh, you can input them right into there as well. And now, uh, when the insured uh, views this, you can actually have them. They can actually select uh, a checkbox that they have or have not uh, broken out any native sod in regards to that. So a very nice tool. Um, our IT group, uh, group has done an amazing job putting this all together. They are working through um, trying to put these documents together where uh, you wouldn't have to actually put any signature boxes uh, in there, but uh, that is still a work in progress. They've uh, started uh, on a few main documents like acreage reports and such of that nature um, are being updated as we speak. So that's kind of the idea behind uh, um, easy sign here and so once I have everything that I need and I put my signature boxes where I want I can then hit finish and that will now send the document to both the insured and the agent and what I can actually show you here is the email that you will actually receive um, in regards to when you actually have an easy sign so you can say that uh, any of your country requests your signature on a document um, we ask that you uh, just review the documents for accuracy. So if I were to hit this Go to Documents tab, it's going to ask me for my phone number that I input in there. And then once it goes in through that, it allows me to go through, sign, and I'd be good to go as well. Now, um, once I sign, and I, it, it would then uh, send to the agent for them to sign and complete, um, kind of a way to kind of keep on top of it and know exactly where uh, that that document is kind of at in our process. You can see when we're back on the uh, main dashboard, under that key activities, there's that easy sign feature. And now you can see if I update this, I did one this morning, um, but uh, we created another one uh, here as well that uh, we are awaiting signatures. Now, uh, maybe the, the guy says, well, I never got it, just resend it to me again. Um, you can double click on that specific uh, line that you're looking for, um, and you can see here that we can go through and hit any resend uh, options on that specific uh, insured or and or agent, I should say. Um, and then you can see the document that was actually uh, reported to, and you can see it was our production report uh, that would be generated for them to actually look at and view here. So that's kind of the nice uh, way to kind of keep, keep tabs on things when it comes to easy sign uh, and just uh, looking at that uh, feature um, we we highly recommend uh, the use of it especially in times of uh, what we have right now but um, it is just a nice tool out there as well um, very similar to DocuSign and such but the nice thing about the easy sign is you don't have to upload anything afterwards uh, like you know any other e-signatures or docu signs uh, out there, you have to send all that information and record log to us. Where our easy sign feature, you simply have the insured sign and yourself sign, and everything is in our system, uh, and that is com uh, considered a legit and uh, good signature in RMA standards as well. So, very nice tool. Get into the end here. Um, we'll go through and actually show how to key a companion transfer uh, via production reporting as well. So uh, here you can see Ross and Jennifer Aniston are companions. So uh, they have they share some ground that goes 50/50. Um, and I was in Ross's policy a little bit earlier here, and when I look at the production, I ended up keying two units of wheat that uh, he had. Uh, reported to me. So um, what I want to do is I want to be able to take these two units of wheat and transfer them to Jennifer's policy being there, a split 50-50 share, um, and everything is the same. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. Now if I were in the policy and I was just finishing endorsing and committing this policy here, 
excuse the errors here. We're rolling some spring policy, uh, some spring crops that don't have any uh, ADMs or actuarials yet, but we'll commit this policy. And by hitting commit, it's going to say, hey, companion policies, do you want to transfer that data to your companion policies? Obviously, we do. So we'll hit yes here, and it's going to open up this companion uh, wizard that we have. Now this can also be found right within the policy is by just selecting that companion related policies up top. Now we already have our policies linked up together and all of our units linked. So we can either transfer our data and this is where it gets a little bit confusing that I have uh, a, a few questions when it comes in um, from agents is which one do I know uh, has the data? Uh, I always state that um, you, whenever, whenever you key data on a policy and you're wanting to transfer that data, you're always going uh, to hit transfer data. And now you can see that those two units of uh, production that I had keyed on Ross's policy would be able to be transferred to Jennifer's. This import is going to be blank for me because now it's kind of searching like, well, where am I supposed to import that data from? Now, if I were to key on Jennifer's policy and be in Ross's policy and hit that import data, it would be there for me. So I'll kind of show you here. If I were to close out, go to Jennifer's policy, hit companion, go to import data, you can see that I can import that data from that other policy there. So uh, just kind of keep tabs on that. Um, I generally say whenever you get done keying a policy uh, and you're doing the transfer, just do it right with from within there, and then you'll hit your transfer data there. So now we have our policy information that we need, and we have our production that we keyed on Ross's policy, and we need to transfer it to Jennifer's. So you can see here our source is Ross's policy, our destination is Jennifer's. We'll hit transfer data. What this is going to do is it's going to endorse uh, Jennifer's policy. And now we can see that we have uh, kind of these two highlighted lines uh, that show that we have our production imported here. And if I were to go into the Quick APH tab, it's also going to show in there as well of what we had reported on Ross's policy that is now into Jennifer's as well. So it's as simple as that. Um, we'll get through that. Sorry here. I know I have a couple errors that run through with that. And as far as when you complete that data transfer, you can see that that um, transfer has went through. I can commit this policy now. And when I go through and do our commit, we'll continue viewing it here. And now everything that I had on Ross's policy transferred over has now stuck onto Jennifer's policy as well, showing that I have my 1,000 uh, bushels of production on the 23 acres um, on unit one, two there. So uh, something that we, we see is underutilized and you don't have to use, uh, companion policies aren't strictly just on like 50-50 splits. Um, you can have you know one or all units um, tied to it as long as that share percentage goes in there. And uh, if, if you're looking more into utilizing the companions, uh, please reach out to your marketing rep or underwriter uh, as well as um, on our IT marketing uh, tips and tricks page, we have a companion user guide that goes through start to finish um, how to set up and link the policies together, linking the units, and then transferring or importing that data um, to those specific policies. So uh, as always, any questions, um, reach out to that marketing rep or underwriter to go through there. A couple last things here. One uh, I want to show is going through our revenue loss estimator that can also via um, turn into a production report as well. Um, now with our revenue loss estimator, you have to be in the production year uh, where you keyed your acres. So in this uh, respect, I look at the 2021 crop year and up at the top right here under the quick links tab, uh, you can see under here we have our revenue loss estimator. And now it's just a matter of fact of pulling up that specific policy that I wanna look at or we do have an agency code too that we can look at. So if I wanted to pull up my whole entire uh, books business uh, for revenue loss estimators to generate as a uh, whole, I can do that. So we'll see here, I'll pop up 
our training agency. Now you can see all of our information that we have here um, for those specific policies. I could go through and commit all of them and keep all of them as well. But uh, in this regards, I will just do a single policy to show you what it actually looks like. And now I have my uh, policy that I want to run on my revenue loss estimator. Um, to the right here, there's a few options that you can go through and do your selecting on. We have rye and wheat as our um, crops down here, and then we have our plans of insurance that follow it here. Uh, underneath here, you can see uh, if we wanted to generate multiple copies for both the insured and the agency, or if you have a master agency, you can do it that way. And then we have our buttons down below here showing either harvest prices, being able to preview the document before actually um, committing it and printing it. So harvest prices, obviously you can see we have our projected price that came in uh, at springtime, and then uh, the fall price here of harvest uh, gets implemented right in there as well. Um, now this is going to error out on me if I were to try and generate it here, but I will actually show you what it pulls up to be and when it's generated here. So uh, here's our revenue loss estimator and production report. You can see it just gives a summary of coverage on our first page, as many documents do, uh, as well as our planted acres and such. And then we get into showing um, those actual documents here. So uh, when you go through and report the rest of the production, um, you can see down here, uh, we can input any of that information in there as well. So uh, it's nice because this uh, allows you to, to input your production and then you can sign on behalf of them and say it was a production report as well. Um, something that uh, a lot of people um, don't realize, but uh, why recreate the wheel twice if uh, we have all that information in there uh, that you reported on here, uh, you should be able to just use it as your production report going forward. So a very nice tool to utilize as well. So we'll close out of that. Last thing that we will cover today is on mobile production reporting uh, via the mobile app itself. So uh, here I have our um, IT tips and tricks uh, opened up here, just kind of going through um, what it's actually going to look like when you log into our mobile app. Um, the first thing you'll do is you'll choose your MPCI policy on the left-hand side that you're wanting to look at and report production on. And the thing to note um, is you have to um, have your status as production reporting uh, date, so PRD in there um, for actually reporting the production. And then it depends on if it was a map-based production report or if there's no map on how we can actually go through and select either by field in report production on or if it's just on a unit-based uh, uh, view as well that we can just um, select that and go through there, uh, reporting production unit by unit as you would on a quick APH tab uh, within EasyWriter Pro. Very similar functionality when it comes down to it. Um, and then the nice thing, uh, when you uh, end up finishing it, it all gets input into EasyWriter Pro, um, and you can generate any production report and AP and or APH that comes along with it there as well. Um, and then uh, the last plug here in regards to any resources, we have a fantastic user guide that really, really goes step by step um, on it. And then we also have a YouTube video uh, on, our share, on our YouTube website um, that goes step by step as well, um, kind of walking you through it uh, which is a really nice guide and props to our uh, IT marketing staff for uh, putting all this information out there as well. And then last uh, but not least, we do have our production reporting training suite um, that is found on our uh, agent portal as well. And it just goes through all of kind of what we talked about today, um, going through and actually doing uh, current year production reporting or mobile production reporting, uh, doing companion policies, everything here you can actually click into and it goes a little bit more in depth into it and then gives any user guides that might be uh, possible with that as well. So with that, that kind of wraps up uh, what I had today. Are there any questions? 
I appreciate everybody uh, hopping on today and uh, taking the time to go through uh, production reporting with an Easy Writer Pro. As always, if there's any questions or concerns, please reach out to your marketing rep uh, or underwriter. But uh, if not, I'll let you guys go, and I hope you have a good rest of your Wednesday. Thank you so much.